Kaya lahat yung mga ninuno namin noon, that and long life, they will reach 120 and 145. Ngayon, kailangan mo nang bumili yung may mga chemical para mabilis lumaki ang tanin. Mas matatali mo kayo huwag sa akin. Pag sinabi pa ng save the soil, talagang literal na save the ano. Pag yung mga nakatira sa soil. Pag yung mga soil na kayo, bigan ng farm. Grabe o! Pati yung bulati matay na na matay na siya. This is sacred. There may be bacteria, but they will not kill me. The kind of bacteria that are here, they are going to help the plant that I will plant. They are going to feed the plant. Kailangan siya tinapin! Okay! Ano ka my name is Suzette, and I have heard about soil extinction and the Save Soil movement. Right now, statistics say that 52% of the agricultural land across the globe is already degraded. The United Nations also warned us that we have only another 60 years of agricultural soil left. But is it real? Is soil extinction real in the Philippines as well? To find out, I thought the best place to go to would be the Banawe Rice Terraces. The Banawe Rice Terraces, located in Ifugao Province, are often referred to as the Eighth Wonder of the World and have been called a supreme national symbol for the Philippines. It actually serves as an example to the world for its sustainable agricultural practice with proven traditional techniques. This structure of rice terraces carved out of steep mountain terrain has been in existence for over 2,000 years, amazingly built largely by the hands of our ancestors. It is also said that if the steps were put end to end, it would encircle half the globe. So I went and visited my Ifugao friend, Manong Mamerto, to check out the soil health of our country's pride, the Banawe Rice Terraces. This was a personal journey of discovery to learn about the issue of soil extinction. I am not a professional filmmaker nor a blogger, so please understand the quality of the audio and video in the interviews. Most of the interviews here are not planned. I was armed only with a great deal of curiosity, an old digital camera, and a cell phone to record everything. But what I've learned is so valuable. I decided to share them with you. Ano po yung nagiging cause, reason bakit po nasisira yung rice terraces? Yeah. Nasisira yung rice terraces because of uh, yung mga cutting of trees, di ba? Cutting of trees in the buyong or the, when you cut trees, there is no more water to to run down to the rice fields. Actually, our buyong is the source of the water that comes down to the rice fields. Sometimes, uh, one of the factors, I think, is the yung erosion, the mm -hmm. erosion of the soil. Because the uh, roots of roots ng trees, when you cut the root of the trees, sometimes the, the roots that's already inside the soil will be, will be rotten, will be rotten. And no more roots to hold on the on the soil itself. So. Ano naman po nung yung mampatin yung masasabi niyo po regarding sa modernization farming right now mm -hmm. na ginag, parang ina-apply na po nila sa pagtatanim sa rice terraces? <clears throat> Ngayon, we have also to, uh, there are training, some of the people were trained also to use organic fertilizers. But I think it's not so 100% at us of this moment because they are using inorganic fertilizers in order for to do some big business. That's why uh, some of the gardeners here also in our with our selling also some uh, vegetables who are full of uh, inorganic fertilizers. That's why it also affects the body. So kailangan natin talaga yung organic para it helps us also to have long life. They turn the rice fields into garden fields. 
So once that uh, the inorganic fertilizer are always there in the garden all the time, the ano of the the soil will be destroyed and plants will not grow robustly anymore. So and as of this moment, talaga, we are also the the office, our culture office is also restoring those uh, when you say culture because our culture is incorporated with the rice fields we cannot just plant the rice field without doing the some rituals in the culture before even though you have 10 bundles that you have harvested in the rice field it will multiply into hundreds in the olden times when uh, uh, one of my one of my lolo there's a kind of ritual, what we call the ikot, that even though you are getting and getting the the bundles of rice will last long. It is there already, even though you are getting and getting, it's already there. It will not be consumed. So it will supply the whole family of 10 members for the whole year, even the small rice fields. Because our culture is incorporated there in our plantation of the rice. Most of the rice fields in the olden time, and the people were very industrious during those past days, past years. So even though they have a little bit, uh, a little uh, rice fields, they can also uh, supply the whole family for the whole year because they clean the rice fields uh, nicely and plant palace, and the palace are very big, robust because uh, of the uh, fertilizers. Those are the organic fertilizers that they have been doing. So of course, before planting the rice, uh, the family they have to clean also the the grasses so that the grasses will be put there in the rice field to be rotten as organic fertilizer. Kaya lahat ng mga ninuno namin noon, they have a long life. They will reach 120 and 145 because uh, the fertilizers of the palace are natural, so the grasses. So in most of the olden times, our parents have experience fed that everything because they eat the uh, what is in the soil is good. So when you eat also uh, the plants that is already planted in the good soil, it will also care, be carried in your body. Um, that is the important of so it gives you life without soil you exist. Everything that comes from soil is life. Another practices of our old, the old folks, and but I think it is still being practiced now. Is uh, they will only plant once a year because they will wait for the uh, rice straw to be decayed. They will not throw it out. They just uh, cut it there and then leave it to be decayed, and it will become uh, fertilizer. That's why our rice, our native rice, is called tinawon because they are produced yearly. Tinawon means annual or yearly. So we, we don't have second cropping because I know this has been proven by our ancestors that when they will practice second cropping, they will deplete immediately the soil uh, fertility and so they, have, uh, they will not uh, harvest uh, as much as they expect when they will practice one uh, planting season per year. So you can say po na soil degradation po is really real even in the Philippines it's happening yeah it's happening due to due to due to major uh, factors the what's that? the work of man will degrade the the content of the soil if we measure it in terms of production I think there is a, there is a, some sort of degradation because uh, the production before and compared to the present uh, situation has already been uh, lowered. We need to say the, in the olden days, they produce more than uh, the production today. And uh, moreover, the farmers are now using fertilizers, whereas in the olden days, it is purely fertilizers from the mountain ranges, uh, indicated, uh, of course, uh, leaves of the trees, herbs, and other plant uh, uh, de decay. decay, yes, uh, compost for that matter, natural compost that is uh, thrown down from the mountains during rain and uh, brought to the rice field, yes. And of course, most of our younger generations focus on education. Like, uh, for instance, in my case, 
when I talk to the European, they were surprised. Why my father and mother, my parents are both farmers, and yet I became a lawyer. Can you imagine that? I, I immediately abandoned their, their uh, practices as farmers, and I went to the law profession. Of course, I cannot already uh, help them, or I forget the farming practices that uh, our ancestors said uh, uh, taught from generation to generation until my generation. Although during my younger days, I used to accompany my parents in attending to the rice field, going even to plow, because we do not use some machineries, we do not use carabaos, and we use our, man, uh, uh, our the spade, or, yeah, not even the commercial spade, we have the, our ancestors have their own blacksmith to, to prepare their, uh, uh, their insular tools, like the spade, in the going to work on their, uh, Rice field because the the shape of the rice field has something to do with the rice bodies, with the formation of the of the rice field. That's why I I observe that uh, this is one of the factors that will now affect our uh, rice production, our rice terraces, not only here in Banabri, but other municipalities because the younger generations focus more, even their parents focus more on education uh, instead of uh, teaching their children to not to forget about uh, the farming practices based on our culture and what have been handed down from generation to generation on organic farming. But a lot of things, there are a lot of factors destroying our sowing and spatial infrastructure, you see. When they clean, like, like you explained, when they when they make uh, roads along the highway, where, where are the soils going? They will go to the river, be thrown to the river, and like that. Of course, the top soil will be gone, no more. So we can do anything because that is the trend now. What they what they are thinking, they are thinking of themselves. They are not thinking of the next generation. They are thinking to become successful, to become rich. To make the road, that's what they didn't also think what will happen this with the generation. Kailangan na ma-educate ngayon ang mga tao. Sa tingin niyo po, Ma'am Kathleen, gano'n po karami yung aware about soil degradation po na nangyayari sa rice terraces po sa lugar po niyo? As of this moment, what I can see is most of the generations are concentrating in white collar jobs and they don't they don't they don't mind they don't feel the degradation of the of the rice field as of this moment due to education hindi nila ano hindi nila nakakamtan kung what is happening to the soil yung mga nagtatrabaho lang sa ano, rice field now nakikita nila na wala na yung mga fishes mga fish mga shells dun sa rice field because pinatay ng ano no, when we go to the rice field, there are a lot of Japanese fish, a lot of shells, a lot of, a lot of uh, let's say, water ladies, because of the good organic fertilizers. Actually, we have a very good bi biodiversity in the olden, olden days. When, when I speak with the Japanese, when I presented our uh, culture and relation to rice terraces, I told them that in, during my childhood days, because in our rice field, we have what we call uh, the old program of agriculture that palayan is done. We have rice, we have we plant rice during planting season, but uh, under the underwater we have uh, shells, uh, edible shells, uh, fish, and uh, other other foods that are that are growing or that are in on the in under water. That's why in my in my speech, in, before the Japanese I when I was a child, during breakfast and during meal time, my mother do not say, go to the market and buy fish. Go to the rice field and there is fish. And I catch them fresh and then brought it home and then cook it and then wow. Mm -hmm. Usually they, when they plant the palais, they, they put in six sides so that the worms will not fit the palais. And that is one also factors that will kill the, the Organic, uh, 
for our younger generation. So like I said, uh, well, we do not object to pursuing their own educational uh, goals and uh, plans. They should also show interest in protecting our rice fields, our rice paddies, and to preserve our environment in relation to the uh, uh, production of rice here in Ifugao in order to maintain our uh, our famous rice terraces and uh, our environment for the good of the other generations to come. Noon 1901, all rice fields and food but now it's house terraces. House terraces, now it's the rice terraces. So how much more if we don't conserve our soil now? In how many years, 10 years from now? 10 years from now, what are the old house terraces? The terraces, now I thought I said before, that the beauty was not the original plan, but it was like a byproduct. Turn out to be the employer of many people, the farmers that maintain the rice field employed many people, including this restaurant. This was put because of our uh, tennis attracted a lot of uh, tourists. Taxi I mean, uh, tricycle drivers, jeepney drivers, guides. So it became the employer of many people in this uh, uh, town. The more reason for us to preserve and uh, uh, invite farmers to keep the terraces so that this kind of employment will continue because many are benefiting mm -hmm. from what we inherited from uh, our ancestors. I am really also very, uh, very interested in the saving our soil, our culture, our rice production, and our environment. Uh, by what we call biodiversity. Uh, hopefully, I mean, if I get the chance to get back to the capital, please keep coming back and I'll be there to, to give you additional information and to be to partner with you regarding the, the safe soil movement. The safe soil, safe soil, safe soil, the safe soil if you know, save the environment and save the people. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. We also met with Uncle Pio and Ate Rowena. They are commercial gardeners. May pagbabago daw sa lupa kasi daw na sobrahan na sa abono kaya nasisira din. Tapos yan, nagmamahal pa daw yung abono. Kaya minsan, hindi na sila nakakabili ng abono, hindi na naabonohan yung tanim nila kaya hindi maganda yung resulta. Okay. Kung wala pong abono, paano po yung lupa, panong pataba? Kahit yung ano, yung compost na, no? Uh, yung sunflower? Sunflower, oo. Kinocompost. Kinocompost. Yun ang ginagawang abono dati. Ah. Pag walang pambili ng abono, yung mga yun, tapos nabubulok yun dun sa lupa na tataniman. Gardener po kayo? Oo. Uh -huh. Ano po ang tanim nyo? Uh, sinubukan namin yung carrots, sinubukan namin yung Ombok, lahat? Lahat na nasubukan na. Lahat? Hasilang yun. Tapos may ano pa yan pala yun. Ako na yun po. Kapos, kamusta naman po? Ano kung ano? Mabuti yung ano. Yung carrot at saka ombok at saka ipon yun. Uh, ngayon, uh, panahon, tumataas yung fertilizer. Wala kami yung panubili. Bakit pa pa yung tinanim ngayon, ang ano, timpo. Mm -hmm. uh, mabubulok yung binanin nila na walang bumili. Walang bumili? Oo. Oh. Wala kasi maraming tanim na yun. Kaya yung iba nabubulok lang na sa sala. Sayang. Walang presyo. So pag po hindi maganda ang presyo, hayaan na lang. Hayaan na lang. Ayan. Kaso hindi maipapalit yung nagastos. Hindi <laughs> oo. Kapag wala akong pambili ng fertilizer, hindi, pa, hindi, na, hindi na maganda yung sunflower na ginagamit mo. Hindi pa rin. Hindi Pwede ko. naman, pero ka, uh, kailangan marami. Kailangan marami. Hindi po ba yun? Pero mas maganda pa rin po pag... Mas maganda pa rin po pag fertilizer. Oh. Bakit po mas maganda? Yung pampingin mo yung tanin na eh, ma... Matataba? Kumangat. Ah, 
Yung, yung po bang gamit nyo po na way po ngayon ng pagtatanimim is modernized way na po? Modern na po? Ano po yung modern? Paano po ba yung modern way po? Tingnan ano po yung modern? Hindi, kasi dati, di ba, nagtatanim sila yung mga yung mga dahon lang yung abono nila. Yung pang-fertilizer po? Yung okay. lang pong pang-fertilizer nila. Eh ngayon, kailangan mo nang bumili yung may mga chemical para okay. mabilis lumaki ang tanim. Kung po ba organic way lang, gano'ng katagal tutubo po ang isang kamatis? Wala. Chemical. Wala, hindi... Dito umangat yung tanim, isti naman yung sa lupa. Oh. Walang bunga pa. Oh. Oh, po. Mahina. So, ibig sabihin po, yung wala na masyadong organic content yung lupa, kaya hindi niya na napapa... Ubus na yung, na... Ano, yung parte natin yung lupa. Ubus na po, ubus na. Hmm. Paano po wala? May peste. Hmm. Meron din pesticide, napang spray. Hindi spray. Ah, oh, po. Parang hindi siya mag-pest Para saan po ito? Pangkubod. Sabi niyo po yung asawa niyo, pinamangas niyo pag nagkaganyan. Tsaka ano, pinapansin niyo po kayo na nagbago sa health niya. Wala naman kaso nung magkagbago niyo yung masakit na rin. Nung nasa pag naaamoy niyo. Kasi kahit na tapos na siyang mag-spray, tapos pinabukasan po, punta ulit siya, may amoy pa rin yung ano. Kaya yung laging naka-ano yun ang damit dito sa ano niyo. Kaso naaamoy pa rin talaga niyo. Kasi nangyibigit sa damit. Ano yung spray? Kunyari, nag-harvest na po kayo ng, ng food, ng bunga. Yun din po yung kinakain po ninyo, yung harvest nyo po. Hindi. Hindi po. Pang-benta pang pang lang po. Kasi yung sa amin, hindi namin ina-sprayan yung pang-ulaw namin. Oh. <laughs> hindi namin nilalagyan ng mga gabito. Bakit hindi? Siyempre, <laughs> masamasa ano to. Yung talagang pang-benta lang ang kailangan lagyan ng gabito. Kasi... Pag ganito na garden kami, meron siyang nakabukod na pang gulay, na pang ulam talaga na hindi pwedeng isprayan ng mga ganito. Yung talagang pang benta na ang inaanuhan, inaalagaan ng isprayan. Kasi, kasi po, pag hindi maganda yung produce, bunga. yung bunga, mura nila kinukuha. Pag pangit. Parang nakakalungkot naman po yun, yung pag pagpangit yung produce pero yun pa pala yung organic yun pa pala yung walang chemical tapos yun pa yung babaratin yun pa yung bibili ng mura kasi yung mga yung talagang maraming spray yun ang maganda yun ang pinipili nila yun ang pinipili po talaga lahat bibili nila ng may presyo pero yung magandang quality yung mga makinis uh -oh. yung magaganda itsura yun talaga ang pinipili. Yun ang good na sinasabi nila sa embat. Yun ang bibili nila ng mahal. Kung baga, napipilitan lang po kayo na gawin dahil yun yung, yun yung um, in demand. Pag po ba yung sunflower yung ginamit nyo, kahit na hindi masyado mataba, maganda ba yun sa katawan? Oo. Yun ang malusok ka talaga. Uh, na nararamdaman ko yun. Pagkakaiba, pag natikman, pag pinahit mo. Kasi meron yung iba na ano eh. Yung, yung matatanda dito dati, nagulang sila ng beans na na-sprayan. Sumakit daw yung siya nila, sinumpungin yung ulsan nila. Nararamdaman. Nararamdaman talaga pag alam siya yung na-spray yung pagkain. Alam mo yung mga nabibili, yung talaga ang maraming spray sa totoo lang. Kasi sa panahon naman ngayon, wala na talagang healthy food eh. Puro na may mga spray na. Kasi dito maraming yung galing sa agriculture, mga nagpa-meeting ng kailangan organic ang gamitin. Hindi naman kasi nasusunod. Kaya yung, yung para sa akin lang, sa pamilya ko, talagang organic ang pinakakain ko sa kanila. 
Pero sa ibang tao, syempre hindi naman masusunod na yung organic ang ibibigay mo kasi naghahanap sila ng magandang quality. Kaya kailangan yung may spray pa rin yung ano nila. Lahat, lahat na lang nabibili ngayon may mga spray na. Ay, translate po, Ate Rowena. Yung kanilang sagot niya. Apa? Paano daw, paano daw maiiwasan na hindi magkasakit? Eh, pag magtatanim sila ng walang spray, walang ano, walang poison, yung mga, yung walang chemical, eh hindi naman daw kinukuha ng mga ahentes na bumibili ng gulay. Kaya, napipilitan na spray ang talaga ng ano, para magandang quality ang makuha, para mabili. Yun. Nakakarating naman po yung supply, yung ano nyo dito, na ibabagsak sa Maynila. Oo, kasi sa ano, empat. Empat pang. Kasi yung sa ano, sa mga sa So everybody will be happy. Ito ang bibilhin ninyo, mas mataas, pero maganda sa katawan mo. Mas mataas para naman mabuhay yung kamawan mo. Kahit na umuulan, nandyan silang magtatanim. So kahit mas mataas, pero mabubuhay sila, mabuhay ka rin ng maigit. Convince them to buy at a higher price para mabuhay naman yung naghihirap. Hindi nga po eh, sa Maynila baliktad. Yung organic ang mura. Kasi yun kasi ang pangit. Pangit kasi. Yun ang bibiling babarating na ng mura. Sa Maynila, ganun. Pag pangit, ayaw namin. Massive, massive education. Opo. Kailangan mabaliktad. Kailangan... Pag may konting... At, at dapat maging aware talaga yung mga tao, ano talaga yung nangyayari, bakit nagkakadan ito. Kasi ako sa totoo lang, hindi ko po ito alam eh. Nagkataon lang talaga na nagkaroon po ng ganitong movement. Nung nag-research-research ako, nagulat ako sa mga nalaman ko, nasaksihan ko, nung pumunta ako dito. Mas lalo. Ganito pala yung nangyayari, ito na pala yung sitwasyon behind survival ano. Kaya nang sinabi niya. Kasi ah, uh, kasi itong binibili eh. Kailangan din mabuhay ako. Kailangan mabuhay. Kapag connect-connect ko eh, no? Parang ito ah, oh, yung gulay organic to. Tanim ni Uncle Pio to eh. Ayun na. Lumabas na ang totoo. Organic to. Kasi ayan no, may uo. Pero ito ang masustansya. Baka meron kayong isapo nung may spray para makita natin. Wala eh. Wala yun. Ang kakaiba. May spray. Nandun na sa ano, sa pat. Oo, oh, nasa empat na. <laughs> Ito ang organic. Dapat yung mga ganyan, kasi makukugaso naman yan eh. So, pag organic po, um, inuod, kinakain ng mga oh, oh. insekto. So, May mga uod, pero ito po yung talagang nabuti sa katawan. Bakit? So, sa lalang yung uod. Hindi sila namamatay. Kung kainin nila yung may kuyo, mamamatay sila. So, kung gusto mong mamatay, yung maganda ang kainin mo. Mas matatalino pa yung uod sa tao. Matatalino yung uod. Dapat matuto tayo sa mga uod. Sila ang magiging professor. Ano po ito? Yung tain ng manok. Pero may chemical din yan kasi na yun yung mga tain ng bikal. Yung ina-enjekan na bikal, yung iniipon, tapos yan yun. Yung manok, pinapakain ng feeds. Oo, pinapakain ng feeds, tapos dinutun ka ng So, ano yung injection? Kaya chemical na rin, hindi na rin natural. Ang ibig nga sabihin, bottom line, yung yung mga manok, dahil pinapakain din ng mixed na chemical, yung tain nila, hindi mo na rin masasabi na organic. Dahil may chemical na one. Kaya may chemical na rin yan. So, hindi na talaga siya organic man. Ito yung mga palayan na ginawang ano, garden. Kasi walang tubig. Ba't po na wala yung tubig? Walang. Katiga lang. Wow. Kasi na itong pala, hindi na rin organic po. Talaga po? Grabe, pati palay. Ano po yan? Kamatis. Meron na po tayong spray? Oo, ayun o. Ayun o may mga spray.
cut ng spray, kitang kita. Paano po nalalaman pag may spray? Maganda, makintab, makintab. Ah, yung, yung lips nila, no? Maganda. Tapos yung bunga, ayun, may bunga na siya. Agad-agad. Ang ganda. Oo. Ayan. Okay. So, pag talagang maganda. Alam na natin. Ayun, may mga glue. Ayun yung spray nila. Yung mga glue glue siya. Yan, yan yung pampakintap na spray. Pampakinis. Pampakinis. Oo, oh, yung kulay glue na yan. Namamatay daw. Namamatay daw sa yeah. rin yung... Lumalabas. Lumalabas daw sa lupa. Uh, um, ayan o, mga patay lang siya. Kasi na-spray yan talaga. Hindi na organic yan. Patulong ng farmer. Farmer. Hindi ka natin matapulong. Pag sinabi pa lang save the soil, talagang literal na save the... Ano? Mga nakatira sa soil. Pati yung soil na kaibigan ng pangang. Grabe o! Pati yung bulate, patay na, namatay na siya. Hindi na siya gumagalaw. Ano makakatulong? Kasi di ba habitat nila yan? Pati sila namamatay. Pati sila. Pag yan sa own garden, yung mat si Saez ng... Gusto kong malaman ninyo sa taong part na ito traditional ito itong sweet peas na ito tignan ninyo na hindi nakama so ang seeds you just dig a hole and you drop the seeds and it grow into a big plant hindi na distorbo yan traditional din itong sweet pot na ito na hindi na kama. This will last longer. Kasi ano ibig sabihin po lang kama? Hindi na kama? Hindi na kama. Na kama? They did not dig this ah, hindi nila na dig. Okay. Kasi itong kama hindi na, na... Hindi na plo. Hindi, hindi na hukay. Na hukay, opo. You just make a hole. Opo. And then you plant the seed. Itong kama na ito, you use a hole and you disturb the soil opo. and you make a mound. Okay. A bed. Mm -hmm. A bed. Nakakasira yan. Mm -hmm. Kung... Uh, may slope ang lupa. Kung okay. flat, it's okay. But if it is slope, kapag umulan, mawas out yung topsoil. Pero ito, hindi. So, although this is traditional, if you spray with that killer, na mamamatay yung root, mag-slide pa rin yan. Yan ang may spray. Yan ang hindi organic. Makikita mo yung rest na sinasabi ko. Diba ang ganda ang tataba? Apo. Yan ang punong-puno ng abono. Kami, nitiyo. Ang tinay. Manong Mamerto brought us to his farm and made us experience organic farming. Ito ang pangkakit ng fruit at pwede nyo yung weed. Ngayon, yung natin, yung liter. So, different. Yung natin na hilinga, meron ito ang kakit. Yung kakit, yung kakit, yung kakit, yung kakit. Ang different ito, where this can't cover it. Nagaling dito na hindi ko nagsang sa harap. Binig ko lahat niya sa harap. Huwag nang kulahin. The work that we are going to do to clear the weeds and put them in the field for fertilizer. That is what this lady is doing. She's using simple tools. Whenever I see somebody like that using the traditional way of farming, it warms my heart. Uh, at least there's a that not everybody is uh, using uh, uh, chemicals or machines. One of my uh, goals in uh, coming back to Fugao and doing farming 
is to help to help us people reconnect with our mother earth. The earth is our real mother. Uh, it's not our fault that we were detached, not our fault why we put uh, slippers or shoes to our children once they started walking. It's because we made the earth like as our enemy. Oh, there's bacteria, there's a uh, virus. So you will cover your feet to avoid the virus. The earth is our mother, it's sacred. So that's why I'm here to help those who are ready to reconnect with the earth, experience that loss. It's not our fault because we were colonized. So that we believe the colonizer, we believe science that the virus and bacteria will uh, kill us and those bacteria live in the earth it will only kill us because we are making it uh, look at me this is how i lead those people what is more what is more uh, profound or how do you feel the earth more than putting your feet in the mud this is separate there may be bacteria, but they will not kill me because I don't put that in my mind. I remove that. The bacteria will not uh, will not kill me. The kind of bacteria that are here they are going to help the blood that I will plant. They are going to feed the blood. So they will not kill me. They will feed me. They will make me healthy. Come and try it. It's so so. It's slimy thing that is, yeah, it's yucky. It's not yucky to me. I'm so. I'm not going to tell you everything <laughs> that uh, this mud can offer. I will let you feel. We are still dependent on one another in order to survive. Living beings to survive one has to die. That's why animals hunt to their prey. It's all we got. We have to live plants. You know, this is a life. Uh, I need to plant new ones here, so it has to die. Mm -hmm. So I will kill it with love, because it will uh, help to get the species, because I will be planting new rice. So it will die in order to help to, for its species to continue. So magiging fertilizer? Magiging fertilizer, yeah. Okay. It will go back to the earth. So ganito siya. Ipabalik ko na. Pinabalik siya lupa. <laughs> That's what we have been doing. <laughs> That's what we have been doing. This was filled with rice and stuff. I will form an outline, I'll put them down and then you connect. Okay. 
all be removed itong mga grass kasi lagyan ng bagong guide after it is uh, dried I will steer steer the uh, mud to erect it put, uh, we put uh, uh, air into the mud parang papatagas so, patas na pero parang pinapatas pa rin para para level level uh, the purpose really is to erect the soil mo yung uh, hindi na nakabaon na uh, gaano na grass palagi ko ito uh, may try size ang red corn maliit lang kaya uh, uh, hindi ka ano makita but this is the best friend of the farmers uh, kung malaki makikita ka agad what is it called? Ito ang kinatatakutan ng mga uh, city people. The poop of worms. So, uh, kahit na kuntik lang, make the soil so fertile. Uh, without uh, earthworm, the plant will have a hard time. Pero, hindi naman pala ito nakakatakot. Still up right. Maliban lang kamay mo. Yeah! Yay! Nakaibigan na. You're a farmer now. Hello people of the world. My name is Mamerto Kingdongan. My legal name. My typical name is Lakitan. My uh, spiritual name is Kiwatan. I'm from the Ifugao tribe. I was born in the village of uh, Bainina, a uh, town of uh, Banawi, and province of Ifugao. I am uh, very blessed and lucky to have been born at, uh, in this place and time when uh, uh, life, as uh, I recall growing up, is solemn, sacred. Why sacred? Because we respect all living beings on earth. Someone will ask, what's wrong with commercial farming? Here's my answer. It's good because you can well fly away as you apply the fertilizer and uh, the plant will grow fast, fat, and you have more to sell. You will have a lot of money. And think about it. The insecticides that you spread, there is some remnant that is in the food. So life is compromised. Your health, including longevity. Yes, we live simply. Uh, people then were stronger, healthier, and they live longer. Now, you observe people. They are like the plants and the pigs and the chickens that they grow. The plants that grow so fast and big. Look at all the children. It's beautiful. They are like the plants that are fat. I will count my classmates, my age. Many, many died from heart attack, stroke, diabetes, kidney problem. It's from the food. So, yeah, you get that fast-growing food, you get that money so fast, but I don't hesitate to say, you may also die so fast. If you are happy dying early, so you will not see your grandchildren, then continue what you are doing. I like to see my grandchildren grow, and I would suggest to educational institutions, to uh, teach younger generations, to incorrect, incorporate environmental awareness in their teachings. And I like them too, to incorporate or even just making people aware that we have such this traditional way of land use and resource management that is sustainable. And I like everyone, I encourage everyone, those who have already 
gain awareness of the importance of uh, the earth health to spread to share your uh, your knowledge share with your children share with your friends so your friends will also share to their children the importance of taking care of this earth because it is our common mother knowledge that is not shared have lesser value so share and so my journey to the Banawe rice terraces ended indeed the 2,000-year-old rice terraces were majestic and breathtaking. Like what Manong Mamerto said, its beauty was only a byproduct though. What was more amazing was that their farming techniques have made sure that the soil was healthy enough for generations to continue farming. Except now, it is heartbreaking for me to learn that soil extinction is real that it is happening now in our country even in this beautiful landscape the soil is threatened the issue is also complex it involves food security human well-being and economic survival as a consumer how was i supposed to know that what is readily available in the market has been sprayed with chemicals even if I try to eat vegetables and fruits all the time, it doesn't guarantee that I will be healthy because the food itself and the soil on which it grows has been poisoned. It is like slowly killing oneself. The issue is too complex for an individual to solve alone. We need government to intervene. We need policies that will ensure soil health for generations to come because our survival depends on it. We need the wisdom of our elders who understood our connection to the soil. This is why I became an earth body. I will share what I have learned about the soil, its condition and its importance to us, to as many people as I can. <laughs>